Hundreds of millions of years ago, as the Earth's carbon isotopic level fluctuated, life began to experiment and build off its already established simple body plans. The fundamental blueprints for modern body plans, known as Hox genes, developed, and, as reported by paleontological finds, life began to diversify at a rapid rate unlike anything seen before or perhaps since, climaxing at the geological period known as the Cambrian. Now, even though we have evidence that this rapid diversification had appropriate and predicted catalysts, even though we have multiple Ediacaran fossils linking the Cambrian phyla, providing both potential ancestors and intermediates, even though every paleontological discovery lengthens the fuse of this once considered to be unreasonably rapid climb, and even though the Cambrian fauna are entirely alien to what we see today, with the only way they are recognisable being they conform to the most simple and basal body plants, Creationists still insist that the now outdated view of the Cambrian explosion is still proof of animals appearing fully contemporary, entirely unrelated to one another, with no fundamental changes in morphology since. As usual, it is an argument built on either deliberate misinformation or else a profound demonstration of ignorance on the behalf of the creationists. However, the origin of this favourite piece of erroneous propaganda has a history as old as evolutionary biology itself. The complete geological column was still being completed in Darwin's day, and the fossil record was still astonishingly poor due to paleontology being a young and not well understood discipline. As such, fossiliferous life was only known from as far back as the Silurian period. A young Darwin was aware that these already diverse and complex life forms being the earliest evident life challenged his theory. His subsequent prediction that Silurian fauna would be dethroned as the earliest life with further paleontological finds was verified. Ever candid, however, this merely made Darwin set sights on the new supposedly primordial Cambrian system as the mage challenge, and was confident the same prediction would stand. After all, geology dictated there were enormous amounts of time before the Silurian, the same applied to the Cambrian. Back in 1913, paleontologist Charles Walcott discovered the Burgess Shale, which greatly strengthened the Cambrian fossil record. It was the first discovery which indicated that life rapidly changed during this period, indicating to some extent an explosion of diversity. It still remained a mystery, though, whether the fossil record would reveal the vital history of these organisms. And it's this speculation that takes us to the creationist argument we tolerate today. The issue of the Cambrian explosion nowadays is a reflection on the issue of transitional forms. Because of the hundreds of millions of years of evolution detailed brilliantly in transitional fossils nowadays, which creationists are forced to deny in spite of everything, they continuously move back the goalpost to a poorer and poorer fossil status until they can satisfactorily deem it insufficient. They then use this as an excuse to negate all other finds in history. For the majority of the 20th century, if not still today, the closest thing to such a threshold lies at the Cambrian period, and as such, the Cambrian diversity of life has become the hub of a number of erroneous creationist claims. The first, and probably most well known, is that all major animal phyla originated in the short space of the Cambrian explosion. However, this is simply untrue. Based on the discoveries of genomic sequencing and even some particularly lucky fossil finds, we now know that most animal phyla present in the Cambrian began to branch well before it. Of the 38 modern animal phyla, only 9 can be considered to arise within the Cambrian, and that's just the entire period, not just a fraction of this considered to be the actual explosion. Not only that, but not a single land organism, even plant phylum, emerges during this roughly 60 million year period. Next comes the creationist claim that no Precambrian fossils exist, which has since been moved to no Precambrian transitional fossils existing. This was probably true in 1974 and definitely true in Darwin's day, but nowadays the paleontological boom of Ediacara and Fauna has revealed a treasure trove of potential Precambrian phylogenetic predecessors. For example, an as yet unnamed Ediacaran pseudochordate, not quite as derived as the Cambrian Picaya, was discovered in Australia in 2003. This fossil bears a significant similarity to the famous Precambrian intermediate arthropod slash worm Sprigina, whose cinepomorphies and locations found demonstrate it as a conclusive ancestor to the myriad species of trilobites. The bizarre Wawaxia matches predictions of what we would expect of the granddaddy of all mollusks, and the small Cludina provides us with the first calcium carbonate shells. And this is just immediately recognised transitionals though, going back up to 50 million years before the Cambrian, the most complex animals we find are the first bilaterally symmetrical primitive worms, such as Helminthopsis. 
And further back still, the only bilaterians are so primitive that they are only referred to as bilaterians cautionally. Transitional forms go back tens of millions of years before the Cambrian nowadays, but even when the constantly shrinking gaps begin to appear, we can still trace the line of complex to symbol from the most primitive fossil eukaryotes going back another billion or so years. And then all we find are the remains of bacteria of increasingly simplifying function right down to where we find no life at all. Next, we have a grossly inaccurate misrepresentation of exactly how long the Cambrian explosion was meant to last, and more to the point, what exactly happened within that time period. Precambrian fossil forms already make any climb and diversity and complexity very reasonable to be punctuated within a few million years. However, within the entire 180 million year fossil record, 40 million year period and 6 million year explosion, no land animals, insects, spiders or terrestrial plants emerge. The Cambrian fauna is a very poor choice for an argument against the presence of transitional fossils because, although many strange forms found clearly represent doomed experimental lineages, many finds in the Cambrian period are primitive and basal representatives of higher taxa, meaning they themselves are exemplary candidates of transitional forms. So much that even transitional sequences reveal the evolution of subphyla from phyla within the Cambrian period. Mass extinctions and changes in environments are always followed by diversity explosions and we have documented these constantly throughout the fossil record. These explosions and even extinctions are kept silent about because their fossil records are so strong that even young earth creationist websites caution against the weary canard that there are no transitional forms. The Cambrian explosion may possibly have been Darwin's worst nightmare but it certainly isn't even a less than pleasant dream for modern paleontologists. Why does the Cambrian explosion matter? It matters for lots of reasons. And basically, it's part of our history. It's where we came from, and that matters very much. 